what does preparing for peak performance look like? Number one, you want to have a supportive team around you. So for those that aren't lucky enough to be in a NAB League team or a State League team like the BFL and, of course, an AFL club, um, then you won't have access to a sports dietitian, a sports psychologist, a uh, strength and conditioning coach, high performance coach, um, and, a, and, a, and you won't have access to um, as much recovery methods, like massage therapists potentially at your club and physiotherapists as well from a um, rehab point of view um, and looking after your body. So you want to make sure you try and build your own support team around you with the budget that you can from a uh, sustainable point of view. So what does that look like? I would recommend having a strength conditioning coach and a key medical practitioner like a physiotherapist in your corner um, from now all the way through to hopefully grand final day. Big key uh, aspect of peak performance is your routine. So making sure you're really clear on what your routine looks like each day leading up towards game day. So that starts for the day post games. So we played Saturday. Plus one is Sunday for that Saturday game. Plus two Monday and so forth. Plus three is Tuesday. So every day you want to have a clear focus and a routine that you tick off every day to ensure that you're preparing for the next training session. So for most of you play Saturday, it's probably going to be Tuesday. So how can you maximize that you're going to be in the best place to train uh, well with quality on that Tuesday? Uh, and then ultimately, what are you doing Wednesday to make sure that you're ready for your main session of the week being on Thursday for that week so you're primed going into your game. We don't want to just flip in, into gear come finals. You want to start practicing now. Next one's the fundamentals of strength and conditioning in the AFL. So typically for a training session, we'll have a, a performance prep or some sort of routine where we're doing some mobility drills, some running drills, light movement uh, to start with, so like some ground-based mobility, some foam rolling, um, and you're just working on waking the body up essentially, getting the body activated, hitting some good movement positions, some good angles that we're going to use on the field. Um, so things like releasing your hamstrings, your groins, your upper back, uh, your ankles, so make sure that everything feels good as you start to increase the intensity during the performance prep. And you, you might be doing some plyometrics to work on some explosive energy, and elastic strength. Then we go into your on-field um, warm-up where we think working on things like your first three steps of acceleration. We also want to maintain good chronic exposure because that's insurance, that's a vaccine to preventing for soft tissue injuries like hamstrings, uh, groin injuries, calf injuries. So this time of year isn't the time that we want to drop off. And as an AFL strength industry coach, we're focused on making sure we're maintaining good chronic exposure for so for some that perhaps didn't play as much game time, or they didn't their their loads during training due to their mindset, whatever it is, is dropping off. We want to make sure we're getting them some extra top up conditioning to ensure that they've kept their chronic load, which is just their four week average um, of distance and high speed and sprint distance in a in a good spot to make sure come finals they're ready. For whatever comes at them so uh, maintaining uh, enough workload is also really really important we don't want to just always be stripping workload off the athletes because in a couple of weeks time their base is going to be reduced and therefore you're putting them at risk of having a spike in a potential game or, or a really demanding game periodizing training cycle for finals um, this is where we want to focus on two key areas as strength and conditioning coaches we want to make sure we're maximizing intensity so the intensity of the football program, the intensity of the athletes are attacking everything that we're doing from warm-up to agility to speed run-throughs. Um, we want to make sure there's real purpose to everything that we're doing. Um, so intensity is key because we're working on a mantra of, generally speaking, minimum effective dose for the athletes. So it's not the time of year where we're just going to be putting in um, extra uh, long-term athlete development um, focuses for players typically it's going to be all about what does that athlete need to make sure that we're going to be able to prepare well for this week but also for the weeks to come for this current season so everything that we're doing is for the now uh, we're not so much focusing on doing things for um, three years down the track last one uh, elite lifestyle so the big three I harp about this all the time and I've done specific podcasts uh, on and presentations for in our academy membership on sleep nutrition, stress, those three 
uh, need to be absolutely on point. If they're not, and you're aware of that right now, and you're listening to this podcast, and your sleep has got out of whack, you're going to sleep at like 12 o'clock, um, you want to make sure you really start to focus on getting that in order and making sure that your routine is key. There's lots of research out there. Um, there's lots of tips out there on how to improve your sleep hygiene. So check those out. If you listen to podcasts, search for sleep uh, on a podcast. You can listen to it that way on YouTube. Um, no doubt some of our AFL um, educational content will come up. From a nutrition perspective, the basics are key. So making sure you're eating healthy food, um, the source of that food, where you're getting it from is of the highest quality that you can afford. 